What's up, YouTube? It's your man, DJ1. I'm back in the building one more time for another Kai Force tutorial. Hey, before I get into it, I want to tell everybody thank you for all the love I'm getting. I really appreciate that. Helping me get my subscriber numbers up so I can bring you guys more content. Um, it's on the way. I'm an NPC guy through and through, so I'm, I'm go ahead. I'm going to do some NPC live tutorials, some straight NPC software tutorials, um, some Ableton tutorials. All for the urban user, all right? Um, but you'll be able to take them no matter what genre of music you do. I guarantee that, I promise. I've been doing this for a long time, so I got a lot of information I want to share with you guys. So I really appreciate all the love and support, okay? So I had a few questions about the force, and I decided, you know what, let me go ahead and, and do a tutorial on them. Give you some info on them, show you how things are broken down, how things are working in it and stuff like that. And give you my, my impression after having it now for 10 days. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the warp feature, chopping up drums. There's different ways to chop it up. For my machine users, I'm going to show you the way to do it like you're in a machine. Which actually to me is the best way to do it right now. Um, I don't like the threshold uh, way. Uh, I never have, even in the live. Uh, or the renaissance or anything of the other stuff I've used before so so hey let's get into it all right here we go all right y'all here we go let's go ahead let's chop up some samples cool and I'll show you the warp feature while we at it like I said it's basically the NPC menu structure so a lot of the features you can use as far as your experience if you're familiar with the NPC. Just how you arrange songs and build them is more Ableton, okay? That explains how the force is set up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a drum track, all right? So press plus from the matrix window, that plus icon, select drum, boom. Now we got a drum track. Press note, because you know how I like to have my, my, my squares ready, okay? All right, so now we're gonna press load. See this menu right here? These are all the different sounds that are available with the N, the force. All these folders, okay? We're gonna go see these right here. But me, I'm not a default kind of guy. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to go to places and I'm going to select my external hard drive. Okay. Um, let's go with, uh, we'll go with sound library. Give some people some love that's building some incredible sample packs out there. Okay. Let's try that. Let's try that there. Okay. All right. So. We're just gonna select this one. I don't know. All right. I hear that. That sounds like a good sample to chop up. Let's do it. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press load. I could have selected any pad before I loaded it, and it would have went directly to that pad. But because I'm not building a drum kit, drum kit, and all that stuff, I just let it go to the first pad, okay? All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna do sample edit. So now we're in our sample edit page. You can press this little button here, it says trim. If you press that, it turns to chop, chop mode. The manual function is not working. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be working in future updates. I don't know if it was a glitch, if it was just an oversight or what. I don't have that answer. All I have the answer for is it don't work. But that's no problem. You have threshold. So what threshold is, imagine a comp your compressor, okay? And once it's something passes that line, it gets compressed. It's the exact same. Chop at where, however sensitive you got the threshold. So we can set that the threshold. Now it's calculating it and it's reading it, seeing where and then it'll chop based off of those. But it can only do so many chops. So um, I think it's 64, no, I'm sorry, 128 chops. So because the threshold is set so sensitive, it didn't even get to do the whole sample. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the threshold. Now you gotta play with the threshold. So between 50 and 
64, I think. That's where you're going to be able to adjust this sample. On drums, it's a little bit easier to use threshold because you have distinct transients between the kick, snare, hi-hat. It's distinct and you have space between it. But melodic samples is not good for threshold. Now y'all seeing why I don't like using threshold. It's my own personal preference. My workflow does not support threshold. And soon as it is available, <laughs> soon as it's available, believe you me, I will be showing you how to do manual chops in the force. So here, let's just do region. So the way that regions work, okay, they work together with the 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 BPM of the actual sample, okay, um, the time signature. So the the by default the force comes four by four. Right now that's the only time signature they offer. Um, it might change. I don't know what the future plans are for the software. Um, but anyway, it works with that the time signature, the BPM, and then how many slices you want, how many regions you want, okay? So then you would select that. See how it's going up? See how it's doing that? So let's select eight, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that into a drum kit or a chop kit. Now let's do 16, cause so many little pieces on it. Let's do 16, so I got a full pad, okay? So what you do from there, you press shift, convert I most people put on non-destructive I like pad mode pad mode makes it where I can go and fine-tune and edit it later um, with ease without having to redo the whole thing so I do pad parameter I don't want events if you select it create events what would happen is it will create uh, a, a MIDI sequence that goes in line with whatever that sample is okay um, that's a good way to use that would be to, let's say you're going to use a loop, but the timing just isn't quite right. So you chop it up and then you force it into the four by four timing or whatever time signature you use. So you would do that and then you would fine tune it and then it'll automatically play how it's chopped, but it'll play the entire sample. So that's good for like, if you know you're going to use a loop, it's great for that. All right. We we'll go back to matrix, press note, and now you see all your yellow pads, right? You see them all. Hey, hey. Hey. Don't get me going. My chopping game is serious. All right. So that's chopping. I'll show you another way in a second. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna warp that. We're gonna warp that. What is warping? So warping is, it's an algorithm and it's this technical term, but basically it's real time time stretching. That's basically what it is, okay? So you can warp it, you figure out the BPM, you put the BPM in the source, okay? Once you put that in the source, then what it does is say, okay, for these 16 bars, if this is 16 bars, play these 16 bars in 93 BPMs, but make them fit in 93 BPM. So it stretches it, shrinks it, whatever, to make it fit inside of that time signature. Well, I'm sorry, that uh, uh, sequence length that you had set for it, okay? So then now I can speed it up and slow it down. It'll automatically do this, stretch itself, shrink itself, stretch itself, shrink itself. But also on top of that, you can have that going, but then you turn around and say, ah, I don't like the key that it's in. So now you can fine tune the key, turn it up however many semitones you want. I'm telling you now, the higher you go, the lower you go, the sound gets degraded just so that you know. Um, but you can mess with the semitones now and change the keys on it, but it still stays in that BPM. It's just time stretching real time. And it just gives you more freedom with the key and all that stuff later. Okay. So you don't got to go back in there and like we used to have to do back in the day. You go in there, you set the, the BPM, you time stretch it. Then you go in there and adjust the timing. Then set the, the time, uh, not the timing, the, uh, the key by adjusting the semitones. Then you would go back in there and time stretch it again to make it fit. You, you don't got to do all of that with warping. Okay. So anyway, so warping. So I can do it where I'm just warping. Thank you. 
whatever pad I select. I can set it up where, let's say just that pad right there, I can go ahead and just warp that section. Me personally, when I'm dealing with loops, I warp the entire thing. So what I'll do is, pass select mode, okay? Oh, wrong one, fat fingers. All right, edit zones. So I'll press current, I'm sorry. Current is just the one that you're selecting. Multiple, you select the ones that you want. If you notice, they're automatically cl clicking each other off because they're already set on mono for that program that was created when we chopped up the sample, okay? So you see how we got them all selected? Close. Now, warp. Set the BPM to 93. I'm setting it to 93 because that's what the uh, sample was originally. Okay? So now, I got them set. Still the same sample, but now watch this. Let's go matrix. What do I got the, the actual song on? 90 BPM? Um, let's go, let's decrease it. Uh, no, let's put it at 93 first, and then We'll put them all together at 93, and then I'll slow them down and speed them up and show you the benefits of warping, okay? Record arm. Select the pad. No. That's all, nothing crazy. I just, so that was there. Let's look at it. So you see how they're not quite on the grid. I want them on the grid. I was trying to be, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes shit happens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift, select all. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to time correct. And I'm just gonna put them all on one eight, okay? All. So now they should all sync up, okay? Okay, all right. So one thing I'm noticing, you see up top, it wasn't exactly four bars. I went over four bars. I went over four bars. So, all right. So now we got that set up. Now. Let's go ahead, let's speed this up, slow it down, okay? I'm doing, I wanna get to this uh, Q-Link mode. I don't know if they call it Q-Links in the force, but that's what it is. I press shift knob and that took me to the screen, directly to the screen. I like it to be on screen mode, okay? So that I have access to all of the parameters um, on the master screen, because you don't really have access to it, unless you go digging deep. It's one of the things I don't like. All right, so right now, if you look over here, it's set at 93, all right? Remember, that's what we had it warped at. Now watch what happens. See how it's all staying in time? The, the samples are stretching themselves out. That's the benefit of warp mode. Let's speed it up. Now they're all shrinking to fit within the chops that I made. Okay. Put it back on 93. Now let's show you the other side of it. We're going to change the, the, the pitch of them without changing the timing. These are all the benefits of warp mode. Put it 
up six semitones. So the song was in the sample itself was in six was in C major. So six semitones up from C major is one, two, three, four, five, six. That's F sharp minor. So C minor. It was I'm sorry. It was originally in C minor. So it went from C minor to F sharp minor. And that's going up six semitones. You see the sound started to degrade and stuff like that. So that's one of the negatives with uh, uh, warping. So that's warping, chopping, number, well, level one chopping in the Akai Force. So now I'm going to show you the way that I prefer to chop in the Akai Force. So what I want to do is I'm going to add an audio track. Okay. And I'm going to add another sample to it. Let's go back. So what I'm going to do is let's, let's do a drum. Let's do a drum, drum loop. It's fairly simple to navigate through this thing once you get the hang of it. Fairly simple, classic break. Let's do that. All right, so let's go back to matrix mode. So now I got that in here. Let's see the transits. So it's a little bit off. Okay, so it took me a while to figure this out. You actually have to select the waveform to be able to access the sample edit features of the um, the force. Okay, so I'm selected. Now I can access warp, and look at that. It almost did it for me. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fine tune it. Okay, so it's fine tuned. You can go into the semitones, not semitones, the decimals, like it had 86.20. I can zero that out, but for a quick tutorial, it's fine, okay? So now I got both of them. So what we're doing here is we're fine tuning it as the loop is going. I'm seeing this a little bit off, no problem. I can go ahead and move it around, uh, adjust my, my points by going to the clip menu, as you see me doing, and moving it and fixing it from there. Now what I'm going to do is fine tune that one bar. Now what I'm going about to do next is I'm going to go ahead and show you how to manually adjust this cut. So we got it synced up now. I'm sorry I didn't talk you guys through it. So now this is the machine style chopping, which is how I prefer to chop on the force. I prefer to use manual on my MPCs, but when I'm on here, I use the machine method. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that pad to the one below it. All right, then from there, I'm gonna go to edit. I'm gonna clip, press clip. And I'm going to actually change my points. All right. Let's see. Let's see what that was on. Like. All right. So what I'm going to do is go to region. And I'm going to get rid of that clip right there. How am I going to get rid of that clip? You guessed it. Warp. So I'm selected. Warp. Then what I'm gonna do is press shift and the knob, the dial, the, the jog wheel, until I can get rid of that, that little clip on the end. Now let's see. Here we go. Ready? Hey. Okay. So now we're going to do the exact same premise with the MIDI clips for the sample we just chopped. So we're going to press copy the pad and pop, copy it down there. So now. So 
So I found that I like this section for the second part. So I'm gonna change that to two. So I like that for the second part, so let's go. <laughs> that make that sound nice and 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 blend it in with the drums add a bass line to it maybe add a horn stab and I'm right back to 1994 it's dope it's the Kai force for you all all right so I hope you got something I want to show you some of the features of it um, I'm gonna try to knock out uh, note repeat next um, it's only one way to do note repeat I don't like it um, but hey, it is what it is. I'm gonna see if I can try to find a, a figure out a workaround for it. Um, but you got sample chops and you got warping. And we put together a quick little boom bap 1994 type track. So um, you know what it is, y'all. Thanks for hollering that you do, DJ A1. I'm in the building. Remember, A1 made the beat. See y'all next time, all right? Make sure you press that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I'll holler at y'all later.